we had J unit four. All right, what's the problem with J unit four? Why did we need J unit five? I wouldn't say J unit four had problems, but fact of the matter is it was about 10 years old, probably more than 10 years old. J unit four has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, as a result of J unit four being around for a while, it has not been updated with the newer testing patterns. There have been a lot of advancements in testing itself in the code base. As you can guess, 10 years is a long time in the software industry, right? So things change, patterns change, things in the mindset in which people approach testing has evolved. And uh, JNet has handled that. It's been 10 years old. And then the other thing is it hasn't been updated with the new language features. Java has evolved significantly in the last 10 years, right? There's been lambdas, there's been a whole lot of new things. And I think JUnit 4 kind of adopted some of the advancements in the language features, but not all. And, you know, when, you, when you're when sticking to a major version, you got to maintain backward compatibility. And then JUnit had that as a drawback. The other challenge was there were, it was a monolithic architecture, JUnit, had one jar file, right? You use JUnit, you need JUnit, you drop the jar file. You don't have like, okay, I want, to, I want only this portion of JUnit, I'm gonna just take this one thing. You didn't have that ability, right? It was one single piece of distributable. It would work for the most part, but then it kind of prevented advancement in JUnit itself, right? So if you keep adding features to JUnit, that one single jar file is gonna grow and you know the disadvantages of monolithic uh, deployments, all that applies for JUnit as well. And then the final thing was that the, with the existing state itself, right, without any of the advanced, uh, you know, okay, I want to bring in new Java features or I want to bring in new testing patterns. With JUnit, the way it is, uh, things piled up, uh, bugs piled up, and then there were feature requests that piled up. And JUnit is an open source software. So people work on it in their free time, people work on it out of initiative, as in, you know, for a need to teach people, for a need to learn themselves and then provide value to people. So things weren't going so well. And actually what happened was, I find it surprising that this ended up happening. There was actually a crowdfunding campaign initiated by the core team saying, hey, we have work to do and we need money to do this work. Everybody uses JUnit, but then nobody were financing it. So there was a core uh, team crowdfunding campaign, and they called it JUnit Lambda. And then people realized, hey, JUnit, which is something that everybody's bread and butter, is in need of money in order to make improvements. So they contributed to it. And then this kind of started the path for JUnit 5. And JUnit 5 itself ended up being a completely new thing. It's not like JUnit 4 increment, right? You can't just go to a palm.xml and say, okay, I'm using JUnit 4, update to JUnit 5, and then have it work. It's a whole new thing. And then it requires changes to the way you write code. 